Here it is. Here's the infamous crossbow scene. One of the first pieces of footage we got was a video of, um, there was a shot of Caspian holding the crossbow and Susan kind of comes up and helps him. And there seemed to be kind of this awkward little thing going on there. And if you see my reaction to that, you can watch video number 13. Um, but here it is, finally, the scene that were all the controversy. It's really, you know, there were murmurs of Caspian and Susan before that, but this is really the controversy. Just It just took off. Uh, first off, it is a pretty darn cheesy scene. At least the first half of it is. Like, the whole line about Rome, the, the performances also weren't very good. Um, then when he comes out of nowhere, good afternoon, your majesty. So cheesy, just the way it's done. He's kind of trying to impress her. Um, so are they flirting here? Uh, there's definitely something going on here. I mean, if, if you're a fan and you're trying to explain it away, you can. You can interpret it that way. Kind of a, a couple things like that in this movie where you really want to interpret it that way, you can. Um, but come on, if you're just, if you haven't read the book, if you, you haven't really been keeping up with the movie or anything, if you're just kind of sitting there watching it, that's how it comes across. I don't see how you can deny that, to, at least to some extent. Maybe not as bad as we thought, but at least to some extent, there's some kind of flirtation, some kind of weird attraction going on here. Um, obviously, this is mirrored after the shooting match, uh, like in the book, you know, where there Trumpkin and Susan, and here you've got Caspian and Susan. They've even got a couple similar lines, like, I'm sure that's not an acorn, like lines that are kind of similar to lines in the book. In context, how would this play out? I think that's, I think that's the main reason they cut it. Uh, there was also, some of the controversy was certainly a factor. And um, they shot that scene in the movie where uh, the fawn, you know, it's a very brief scene right before Peter starts talking about the night raid, uh, where he sees the soldier. And um, that was, you know, that was, that's become one of my favorite scenes in the movie now because it was shot in place of this. But uh, I think that does work better. It's better to just get on with the story, get on with the night raid. But uh, so the big question I think that all Narnia fans really have to search their hearts about is um, what would you prefer? Would you rather keep the kiss and um, keep this out? Or would you rather put this scene back in and take the kiss out? Which, what's the lesser of two evils? Um, I'm going to say, after seeing, after actually seeing the film, that I would rather delete the kiss and put this back in. Because, like I said, you can interpret it that way, and you could just say, well, this is really the first time where it's just the two of them, and they're kind of meeting, and maybe, um, I don't know. I just think both of them are bad. And obviously, I'll just briefly restate the reason that the kiss, or really any kind of Caspian Susan attraction is bad, is because the myth becoming fact, Susan is a figure out of myth and legend to Caspian, not a girlfriend or anything. So it really detracts from that theme incredibly. Incredibly, even this does that. Either way, it's really damaging to the, such an important theme in the story. But if I've got to pick the lesser of two evils, I'm going to rather put this scene in rather than the kiss. Because then it's still, it, it doesn't really go anywhere that way at least. And um, also, you know, you, you could interpret it you could interpret it that way. You know, it's not as, like, I really feel like the audience walks out of the theater. The current version of the movie, the audience walks out of the theater and they, um... And they're kind of the old Caspian and Susan, you know, whereas if you don't have the kiss, you don't get that nearly as much. And uh, so I think at the end of the day, it's would be kind of less damaging to the theme of the story to have this than the kiss. But uh, an absolutely abominable scene, for sure. Oh gosh, what a stupid scene. Uh, it's, if you look at this, like, even if you look, just look at it in context with this scene, and like Adamson says, the complete wrong time for a comedic beat. I guess this would be, probably be just after Caspian has learned that, um, that, uh, you know, um, Mira has murdered his father, that's when the scene would be. Uh, the total wrong time, and with uh, the secrecy and the intensity of sneaking in, this is the wrong place for this. Also, it's a really stupid... Why would Peter say, where did that come from? First off, he would probably know. I mean, come on, I, I, doesn't, he, doesn't he aware that Mira has had a son? Doesn't, isn't this kind of what the whole plot is being driven by? That's, and, uh, so I... Yeah, but even if he didn't, where did that come from? That's pretty harsh. I mean, come on. I just thought it was a really stupid way of saying it. And it's a really dumb line to have in an Arnie film. And as it plays right now, actually, I do remember thinking uh, when I was um, watching the movie for the first time, and even upon repeat, uh, repeat viewings as well, that, like, Caspian gets there awful fast. It's like, you know, you burned my father, then it kind of cuts straight to him with a sword. And actually, the way they do it is they kind of um, make you think that it's the Pevensies pointing the sword. You just see the sword go up against Mirai's neck, and you think it's Peter's sword, and then you realize, oh, it's Caspian. It's kind of a surprise, which I kind of like, but I did feel like, oh, there needs to be 
one more beat right there, because Caspian just kind of uh, magically appears in Miraz's study, is kind of, or Miraz's room, kind of how it plays right now. But this is not the beat. I'm absolutely 100% glad they took this out. It's a really dumb joke, and it's the complete wrong place for it. There's a lot of cool little things in this scene for fans of the book, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, at the beginning, you see Peter and Caspian having a discussion about who should fight Miraz. And, um, which, uh, or that was actually one of the theories that, that we had. Uh, they'll probably have a big conflict there. We actually thought that, that the sword fight, we actually thought that the Peter Caspian sword fight, we were speculating, was actually going to be about them fighting over who gets to kill him. I'm pleased to see here that the discussion, which is briefly in the book, Caspian does say, you know, oh, can it be me? I want to avenge my father. And Peter quickly says no. But it, it, the main thing is, it's nice to see Peter and Caspian getting along here. Um, we saw them together, you know, when they were arguing after the night raid, which there is some basis for in the book. There were short tempers in the army, even though um, the Pevensies weren't part of it. Now, obviously, I, that doesn't mean I'm in favor of that scene. It still kind of messes with the whole idea of the myth becoming fact. And, um, and Caspian not having that awe and reverence for Peter that he should. Here you at least see them getting along, and yeah, Caspian is saying, he's, he's not arguing, he's saying, come on, let me, acknowledging the fact that Peter is the number one guy. Yeah, he kind of, I guess he kind of did, did that before with the night raid. Obviously, he went on the night raid even though he didn't want to. But um, there's a real acknowledgement here of Caspian putting himself under Peter's authority, which I like. This part also, a little bit at least, there's a little bit of a character transition for Peter, as far as we get, there's, when I was watching the movie, the movie for the first time, and upon repeat viewing, is I kind of felt like, there isn't, we, it really needs one little scene where you get to see Peter make that transition from a jerk egomaniac, who's not in the book at all, to High King Peter, where he humbles himself. It's subtle, it's there, but it, I just felt like it needed just one little extra bit, and this, this kind of gives that, I think. There's also some explanation of the armor. Peter doesn't just appear in the armor. Obviously, I have no idea why they had it there. That still doesn't make sense. But um, at least there's some acknowledgement. Well, here is your armor. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. And then we come to the bulgy bear. Obviously, a very funny moment in the book that I think most fans, including myself, were really missing. And uh, that I had a lot of hope would actually be in the movie because, you know, well, when I was on set, uh, Shane Rangy, who play, play, was the stand-in for the bulgy bear, uh, they kind of made a joke, okay, come on, suck your paws, you know, so I kind of thought, oh, maybe, maybe this will be in the movie, and ended up getting cut out. But, uh, it's a, it's a very funny moment. Um, would Peter actually, the thing that really gets me about the scene is that I don't buy William Mosley's performance, or maybe, maybe it's just the character as a whole. I don't buy Peter saying, like, you know, when the bulgy bear says, you know, I'm a bear, I am, and then, um, Peter says, you know, in a good bear too, it's all the line from the book, or it's very similar. I don't see movie Peter saying that. Maybe that's Mosley's performance, maybe it's just the, just a good example of how different the character feels and from who he is in the book. I don't know. But I just don't really buy Peter saying some of those lines. Reapy Cheap is in this scene, and um, and he says half of my favorite line, my life is ever at your command. And then he doesn't finish it. In the book he finishes it, but my honor is my own. Do what you want with my life, but my honor, that's mine. That's kind of Reapy Cheap in a nutshell for me. And I don't know why they wouldn't finish it right there. It's such a great line. That was kind of frustrating. But uh, would I want the scene in the movie? I mean, obviously, the Narnia fan in me absolutely wants to see the Bulgy Bear suck his paws, wants to see Peter and Caspian getting along more, um, maybe a l build up, building up a little more tension about the single combat, maybe, um, in the court, the Bulgy Bear, Reapy Cheap. There's a lot of cool things for fan or fans of the book. Um, but maybe... Maybe in context with the rest of the movie, as it is, I feel like the third act is way too long. Like, the battle especially just goes on forever. It's like, let's just get to the single combat. You know, I can definitely see them, Adamson thinking that way. So it's basically, overall, maybe they could just include the first half of this scene, like uh, just when Caspian and Peter are talking, kind of build up the tension of, the tension of you know, showing Peter's nervous about this, build up the suspense a little bit about the single combat. Maybe that, that would have been good. And maybe as much as it would hurt me, keep the Bulgy Bear stuff out. But I'm really divided on that. The Narnia fan in me absolutely loves seeing this stuff. I wish I could see the animation finished. And, um, you know, so I'm kind of divided on that one. But either way, it's very cool It's very cool to see this scene in the special features. So those are my thoughts on the Prince Caspian deleted scenes. There's a couple of neat things in here, like the apples and the Bulgy Bear. Cool little things that maybe there wasn't quite a place for them in the movie. But uh, as an Arnia fan who loves the book, it's really nice to see them in the special features at least.